I hope everyone had a good weekend and you're ready to uh, get back to some breaking. I guess it was a little more than the weekend, wasn't it? It was. This is Tuesday. I seems like Monday, but it's Tuesday. So we have one break tonight, and that is a half case of Allen and Ginter baseball. It is the back half of a case that uh, we started. I don't know when. Maybe a week or ten days ago, two weeks ago. Somewhere in that neighborhood. Anyway, it's time for us to finish up the rest of it. So let me get a little information out to you, and then we'll start ripping. Feedback, 100% automated. That way you never have to wait on me. Anytime you leave positive feedback for me, you will instantly get the same in return. Thanks to the wonders of automation, there will be no waiting. And of course, the far more important message from this particular sheet is to say thank you. Always appreciate you being here, bidding, breaking, chatting, and hanging out with me, keeping me company and such. This is what it looks like for the days ahead. So tomorrow night, uh, it's a new release day tomorrow. And of course, we are, uh, as usual, going to try to break everything that releases. Some of it we're going to do in a little bit smaller quantities because we do have several things coming out. But we will get it all fit in there. We're going to start early tomorrow night too, 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific. We'll open a half case of Bowman Sterling Baseball, a an eight box inner case of Unparalleled Football, and a six box half case of Heritage High Number Baseball. Thursday night, we're going to open a case of TriStar Autograph Football Jerseys, which might be the last of those I have on hand. I'm not 100% sure, but it might be. And we'll open another eight box inner of Unparalleled Football. On Friday, we're going to get into some Donruss football again and open a nine box half case of that. In that particular break, base cards do not ship to the teams, has its own bidding spot. Full information about what is and is not included can be found in the listing description. Then both Saturday and Sunday, we're going to do another weekend where I've got a couple of days off in a row. Uh, just got a lot of stuff I've got to get caught up on and I want to... Uh, I want to get back to square one, right? <laughs> I feel like I'm always working from behind. So, uh, yeah, that's what we're going to do. Tonight, of course, our half case of Allen and Ginter. I am anticipating to be on the way to you approximately Friday. If I can get it out to you sooner than Friday, I will gladly do so. If something unexpected happens, it could always go to Saturday. But as of right now, I feel like Friday is our most reasonable uh expectation for shipping if you have one of the team bidding spots in here you're definitely going to get cards you don't have to worry if you have one of the other bidding spots you know like the presidential pieces or the dna relics the stuff that doesn't come out every single time you will still get something for that bidding spot because this is a paid shipping break so if you get skunked in one of those type categories and you don't pull a single card or or anything, you are still going to get a package and it will have consolation card or cards in it. So, moving along, it is a six box half case of Allen and Ginter baseball. This is break number four. And of course, this also ended on eBay tonight, Tuesday night, the 13th of August. We've got team names on the left hand side, winning bidders, of course, across from on the right. And uh, we had one team that didn't sell. That's the Marlins. You'll see that noted there on the spreadsheet. I used to always say no bids buyback, and then some people were confused by what buyback meant. So that way, that makes it a little easier, I think. Note that we do have some other bidding categories you see listed there. Again, this was discussed in the listing description. But non-baseball celebrity, presidential pieces, DNA and arrowhead, Horse Equipment Flight in Bloom Lookout Below, Blue Ribbons and Canine, Chugging and Languages. Those are all, as you see, listed separate bidding categories. So when we pull things uh, that fall into those categories, they will, of course, go to those bidding spots. Finally, we got to got to change up of the focus here a little bit, and that is why your background went out of focus a slight bit, and that's just easy because uh, I like to look at things up close. So that's the easy explanation for that. That's me messing around with it, setting the focus manually. Let me get a few more little sleeves here out on the table for the thick cards in case we need some of those, and then we're going to get rolling here. 
Jay Allen, you have got the Phillies, the Nationals, and the Rays. And you're looking for a booklet. You know, those are hard to come by, my friend. Those only come out like once every 10 or 11 cases. We've already been lucky enough to hit uh, one this year. I think it was maybe out of our very first case, if I recall correctly. Um, but yeah, those are really rare in Allen & Genter, which is not to say we won't find one tonight. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're tough. They're tough to pull. And then we've got, of course, uh, our oversized uh, box loaders here will be uh, in each box. We'll take a look at what we've got here. Those are possible to be rip cards this year. That's a change they made to make some of the box loaders rip cards. Francisco Lindor comes out first, and that is for the Cleveland Indians. So first up tonight is a box loader for the Indians. Now, in each of our Allen & Genter boxes that are here on the table, we're going to find three hits. And Allen & Genter defines a hit as an autograph card or a relic card or a printing plate or a booklet or a rip card. So some combination of those, I mean, it could be three autographs, it could be three relics or any combination thereof, but three hits is what we're looking for anyway. Kevin, uh, you said that's a good start, so you must have the Indians tonight. You wish it was a triple rip. Yeah, no doubt, man. <laughs> no doubt. The, the, I like the rip cards anyway, as you all know. That's, uh, I'm always fascinated by, by the rip cards. I would love to pull a box loader that was a rip card. That would make me pretty happy. So this first box will take a little extra time as we see some things in here just to give you an idea of what's what. Then when we go through, ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. then when we go through the rest of our things, it will be a little done a little slow uh, faster. I'm sorry, I got completely distracted. I felt this in there first and I thought, do we really have a metal mini in there? And yeah, we do. That is for the Cardinals, and it is Miles Mikolas. So, Michaelis, actually. I always say Mikolas. I think he pronounces his name Michaelis. So, a little metal mini. Ha -ha, how about that? That is uh, pretty super cool. So, yeah, I felt that, and then I had to stop because I wanted to see it. <laughs> I really, really did. Now, we'll look at our other minis. You'll notice I try to remove them from the from the packs as I open them because otherwise they, they tend to want to just go everywhere. So I like to just pull them out separately. So this is an example of non-baseball celebrity, okay? So that's athletes, celebrities, sportscasters, whatever they are. If they don't play baseball and they're not connected to a baseball team, i.e. manager, owner, whatever, they go to non-baseball celebrity. Lost Languages, of course, has its own bidding spot. Then we've got our uh, little, that's the Allen & Ginter back on that particular mini. That's what the regular back looks like on the minis. And then we've got a little uh, collectible canine, which, of course, again, its own bidding spot. And this is kind of how we'll do it. We'll look at all of our, I'll shake out the minis, another Allen & Ginter back. We'll look at our minis out separately first and then look through the cards. How about that? Edward is here. Edward needs some Pete Alonso and some Eloy. All right, so you've got White Sox and Mets in here tonight. Then we'll do our best. So, sorry, I said we'd go through it and then I started looking, didn't I? Multitasking, not my strong suit tonight. That was an example of a non-baseball celebrity. This is an insert, but of course it is a baseball player for a baseball team, so it goes to the teams as normal. It's just an insert, another non-baseball celebrity kind of thing. And there's probably, yeah, so incredible equipment. As you know, we have a separate bidding spot for it. Uh, horses and Stallions has its own bidding spot. And let's see what else we've got in here. Maybe something else interesting. Oh, yeah. 
star signs. These again will go to the player and the team on the card, but it is just an insert set that you're going to see fall kind of periodically. That is an in-flight uh, history of flight example. They all look very similar to that, look kind of like paintings, which is, I think, pretty cool. Another incredible equipment. And a hit. We have a relic kit. So let me get our base cards here out of the way and we'll get a little sleeve on this bad boy. And we have a nice little relic for Salvador Perez and the Kansas City Royals. Jay Allen, you said if I hit a rip card while you're watching, we'll rip it on the air. Oh, well, that would be fun. Yeah, I would like that. You know I'm a sucker for that. <laughs> and you have the incredible equipment tonight, too. All right, well, cool. You got a Santa sleigh a minute ago. And something else went by that was incredible equipment. I got completely fascinated, of course, with the little uh, metal mini card there for the Cardinals. So I'm still kind of, it's, you know, distracted by it. Shiny. <laughs> Is that bad that I'm easily distracted by shiny objects? It probably is, but hey. You don't pull very many of those. And typically, if there was a metal one, it would be inside of a rip card. So that metal one just flying around loose in there. Pretty, pretty cool little hit for me, anyway. As long as you got the card inside. Well, of course, Jal, and we would send you whatever came out of your rip card, too. Of course, we would. For sure. I'm just looking in here. I want to see what the odds are of finding a metal one. Um, one in... Well, this doesn't say metal mini. That's the regular mini. I wonder what, how, what the odds are for the metal mini. Hang on. I'm just curious. Well, I can't see it right offhand, but anyway, it was one in 2,300 and something to hit any metal one, but I don't know if they even make metal full-size ones, so maybe that is the mini. It just didn't say mini, so anyway, not something that comes out super often is the moral of the story, I guess. That's another one I think that would fall about one in, close to one in every 10 cases, something like that. Yeah, Jay Allen says they're long odds. Yeah, I I think what I saw, I was just trying to glance at the back of that wrapper, and I think those odds probably were for the many, although all the others would say many this, that, or the other, because I'm not aware of any full-size metal cards in here. So if that's the case, it was one in every 2,300 and something packs, which would be about one in every 10 cases. Which, you know, considering we hit the booklet out of the first case, we hit the metal mini out of the second. I mean, that's not too shabby. Sister, whomever there is a uh, non-baseball celebrity. I do still have more Allen and Genter. Uh, of course, we've got more of all kinds of stuff. I've got an absolute overflow of things right now. And we are eventually going to do something with it i'm actually i think i'm gonna sell off a few things to some other breakers and people who are short on some things that i am long on just because you know i don't want to get so far behind that we're not having enough time to break the new stuff as it comes out so i think i might do that and help get caught up a little bit so jose altuve and the astros with a framed mini relic. So we are two for two right now, relics. And I guess our metal mini, I would assume, would count as our third hit in this box. So I don't expect that we will find another one in here. Ryan, you've got the Astros tonight. All right, well, that Jose Altuve is headed your way, my friend. 
it's always good to get a hit early, isn't it? And then you can kind of enjoy the rest of the break a little bit more because <laughs> you're like, whew, at least I'm not getting skunked. So then you can kind of say, all right, well, wait and see how the rest of it flows. At least that's how I am when I do it. Come out of there, little mini. I do love the minis, but they are... Um, do have they are prone to wanting to just slide around and fly out everywhere if you don't kind of shake them out at the start so um if it would, it would help if i would hold that the right way <laughs> look out below that of course is another bidding category that's uh separated out from our baseball category with all the waterfall featured on it It has been a bit since we opened the first part of this, and I do not remember if we hit the hot box in the first half of the case or not. Does anybody else remember if we did or if we did not? Jay Allen, you're usually good about remembering stuff like that that I am terrible about remembering. Well, I guess they did not count the medal as a hit because here is our third hit, and the medal will just be a, a bonus then. This goes to non-baseball celebrity, and it is, um, oh, actually, hang on now. I am wrong. It does not go to non-baseball celebrity because she is a minor league baseball general manager, Emily Jansen. So whoever she manages, we're going to set her up there to remind me to look it up, but whatever minor league team she manages, um, whoever the affiliated uh, parent club is in the MLB side will get that because she is baseball affiliated. It's only the non-baseball affiliated people that go to the non-baseball celebrity category, right? Hence the name. How handy, right? <laughs> okay, dokie. That was box number one. Uno. Oh, Jay Allen did remember. He said it. There was, he doesn't think there was a hot box in the first half. It should be in this half. All right. I paraphrased that, but that's basically what, what you said. So awesome. Thank you, sir. I figured you would remember it. I don't even remember what hardly we opened last week. <laughs> that is bad, isn't it? Oh no, between all the breaking and the sorting and the shipping, I just, you know, I see something and I will be like, yeah, how long ago do we open that? <laughs> but anyway, that's good to know. We should be looking forward to a hot box, it sounds like. We have Mr. Jacob DeGrom out for the Mets with our box loader out of box number two. Ryan, you said she's the GM for the Reno Aces, which is the AAA affiliate of the Arizona Diamondbacks. All right, cool. Well, thank you, sir. Did you know that off the top of your head, or did you have to look that up? I hope you had to look that up. <laughs> Not just because it will put me to absolute shame if you knew that off the top of your head, because I had no idea. And I probably should know, right, because there aren't that many women GMs in baseball. So I feel like, you know, some kind of girl power thing or something. I should have known that. <laughs> but I absolutely did not. I had no idea. I just figured she was, you know, some other kind of celebrity till we flipped it over on the back. Whoops. All right. Well, we learned something new every day. Ryan, you did look it up. Okay, that makes me feel a little bit better, man. I'm thinking, oh, am I the only one who doesn't know who this girl is? All right, well, that does make me feel better. And thank you for looking that up to share it with us, Ryan. I appreciate that. And that means also that we don't really have to keep it up there. We can just move her right on over there since Ryan was kind enough to go find that out for us. And our two little minis, both with Alan and Ginter backs on them. Jay Allen, you were looking it up too. Ah, oh, you guys are so nice. Thank you. I always appreciate that. 
and a relic out early here for the Braves with Sean Newcomb. So that's the first hit of box number two is the Sean Newcomb relic. But if you are waiting on stuff to ship, I did get quite a bit of stuff shipped out yesterday and today. So we're up pretty close to caught up. I still have a little bit more to do. A handful of other breaks still to get out. I think I can get them out tomorrow and or Thursday, which is why I'm projecting this to be out the door and on the way Friday. So... We definitely made a little, uh, made actually a lot of progress by not breaking for a couple of days. I know, J. Allen, you are always good about looking that stuff up and helping me out. Stang Lover's really good about uh, that stuff, too. When, a lot of times when we're breaking leaf, you know, if there's a player in there that sometimes I don't know, kind of an obscure guy and... We have to figure out what team he's affiliated with. A lot of times, either Stanglover knows that or he goes and looks it up. He's really good about the football draft classes and undrafted people. Usually it is. And you are always excellent about remembering what came out of what half. And, and you're always really good about looking stuff up when we get stuck on something, too. So I appreciate that. Ooh, here comes a signature. I like that. I always prefer to find the SIGs, don't we? Well, it's not Catfish Hunter. That was just simply stuck to the back there. And we have ourselves a little Reyes, a little friend Mill Reyes, out for the Padres with an autograph. Our first autograph of the night and our second hit out of box number two. And you know what? I wish that was uh, Tatis. I like Framil Reyes, but, you know, if you have the Padres, you're probably saying the same thing. Hey, I, that was cool, but I really wish it had been Tatis, right? Yeah, we're all thinking it. That kid is incredible. Yeah, J. Allen, you do have a good memory. And, you know, I think I used to have maybe a better memory than I do now and there are still plenty of things I can remember without a lot of effort but what we pull and like what came out of the first half of a case of something or whatever I just don't and I think it's probably due to the fact that I see so many different cards every day not just what we break at night but what I've sorted and or shipped during the day gets in there and fills up my brain space too and and when I have to start thinking back to, you know, a week or so ago, I'm like, whoops, I had no idea. Here's our third hit out of this box. And this is a poker player, professional poker player. Wouldn't you think the relic should be like a piece of a card <laughs> or something? Like, I don't care what shirt he wore when he was playing poker. Like, who cares about that? No, give me a piece of a card that he won a big tournament with or something. Of course, I guess you can't really take the cards, can you? But I don't know. I'm just wishful thinking. Because I don't think a relic from a poker player, it's just like a shirt he wore or something, is just not all that thrilling to me. That is non-baseball celebrity, though, by the by, the poker player. They always put poker players in here, too. And comedians go in most every year, actors, actresses, etc. Some of them, though, will bring some good money. Like when Serena Williams was in here back, I don't know, what was that, guys? 2013, 2014, somewhere in that neighborhood. And if you got a Serena Williams autograph out of Allen & Ginter, it was worth some coin. A oh, little cute little doggy there. A little terrier. 
I always like to look at the backs of the minis, as you can see, because sometimes they're numbered or something on the back, and we would want to know about that if there was anything unusual happening with uh, the minis. Of course, the black borders, you can tell from the front, but sometimes there's things on the back, too. So, always good just to look at them, I think, even though it takes a tad bit longer. Oh, yeah, that's right. You did have a bunch of teams in the first half of this break. I do remember that now because you had like a bunch, bunch, like eight or ten teams or something. I do remember that part now that you bring it up. I had forgotten it, but yeah, that makes sense. The hot box, when we find it, of course, uh, for those who maybe are not super familiar with it, it is, um, I don't know, it's kind of like a gold sort of decoration on it this year. There's always a parallel. I personally liked the rainbow foil parallel that they did a few years ago, but this year is like a gold sort of thing. How about Cal Ripken Jr. coming out for the Orioles with a relic? A little flashback to your Hall of Famer, Cal Ripken, Jr. Man, we got a lot of kids of baseball greats and grandkids of, brace, of baseball greats making their debut this year. You know, you got Vlad Guerrero, Jr., and then uh, Biggio, and... Uh, Bichette and Mike Yastrzemski, who of course is Carl's grandson. He's not one of the sons, he's a grandson, but a lot of our past Hall of Fame type players, their progeny are now making their way in to make a, an impact, which I think is pretty cool. And I like that kid, Yastrzemski, by the way. I don't know how much you all watch the Giants play. I mean, I don't get an opportunity to watch them play a whole lot, but sometimes I get to see those games, and I like that kid. Glaber Torres for the Yankees. They said he goes out of his way to make sure he can avoid comparisons to his grandfather, like, you know, he didn't want to wear the same, here's our hot box, didn't want to wear the same uniform number or any of that kind of stuff because he just doesn't want to invite the comparisons, which makes sense. Considering how good his grandfather was, <laughs> you know, that would be a lot to live up to. So yeah, see, that's what this year's hot box design looks like. It's not my favorite, but... Eh, what are you going to do? The hollow foil, the rainbow hollow foil one is my favorite in recent years for the hot box design. That was probably, what, 2017 maybe? 16 or 17? One of the first cards you bought when you were a kid was Carl Yastrzemski. Oh, that's cool. Carl's an icon, man. That would be a, I mean, that would be a lot to live up to as his, you know, for his grandson. But listen, like I said, the grandson's pretty darn good, I think. He's kind of over, <clears throat> excuse me, overshadowed maybe a little bit this year just because the rookie class is really so, so good. Um, Yastrzemski maybe gets lost a little bit in it, but he's, I think, playing pretty well. But it is a very good, collectively, a very good rookie class this year. All right, so as we've already discussed, that is our hot box design. And so, yep, you got it, because this is the hot box. Pretty much, well, obviously not the history of flight, but pretty much everything else in here uh, is going to have that. And I guess not equipment either. But, all right, so we'll revise it. Most of the cards in here are going to have that design. 
a few inserts and things do not, but the vast majority do. That's what makes it special. <laughs> Here is a relic for Trey Turner and the Nationals. And Trey Turner and the Nationals were busy absolutely thumping my Cincinnati Reds the last I saw. I do not know if that has changed or if my poor little Reds have already lost or what the deal was, but they were getting absolutely thumped the last that I saw by the Nationals. So, there you go. Who had Joe Ross as their starting pitcher tonight. Still, we got thumped. Maybe we've made a comeback. I would not exactly stake my life on it, but I guess anything's possible. Ryan, you got an Altuve triple rip and another break, and you got a, a Yastrzemski stained glass inside of it. Nice. Nice. I like that, man. <laughs> Jay Allen, you're right. That was a little bit. That was a little church lady, Dana Carvey, that slipped in there. It was special. It absolutely was. Yeah, I have too much time on my hands, right? Although I haven't watched the church lady in years, honestly. And the other side of it is I really don't have hardly any time on my hands. I'm always working. I'm always busy. But the beauty of the iPad, I just set the little set that little bad boy over there on the sorting part of the table and let it play stuff that I can listen to more so than watch and do that sometimes while I'm packing anyway. Not so much when I'm sorting because, well, that requires a different level of concentration. But once they're sorted and all you have to do is get them ready to ship by packing them, we can watch all kinds of fun stuff. A little black border. Uh, see, now I've never even heard of this guy. Or girl. or I don't know who it is. <laughs> Butcher. A comedian. Rhea. Is it Rhea Butcher? Rhea Butcher? I don't know. And then I, I don't know. But anyway, whoever that is, comedian, never heard of them. And here comes an, and is that an Andre Dawson relic. Yeah, for the Cubs. Cubbies. That was a piece of the baseball bat appeared to be. And another relic. This one is non-baseball celebrity, it would seem. And another poker player, a different one than we had before, though. So lots of poker players. He wears a nice gray color. <laughs> Our other poker player wore maroon. So, hey, hey, there you go. But, you know, if it's going to be all oh, the egg, the egg goes to non-baseball celebrity, by the way, because the reason the egg is in here is because it became an Instagram celebrity. You heard that right. An egg became a viral Instagram sensation. A plain egg. Because <laughs> that's the kind of world we live in these days. Where an egg can become famous. An unhatched one. No less. <laughs> Maybe be different if it's like an eagle's, in, you know, you're watching like a live streaming cam, webcam feed of like, you know, an eagle's nest and you're waiting for an egg to hatch. That's kind of one thing, but just, no, nope. go in your refrigerator, take out an egg, take a picture of it and make it famous. So my man, uh, 
Aristides Aquino has been burning it up for the Reds. That's been the one bright spot. I mean, that kid's been crazy good. I mean, well, we traded Puig, of course. And when we traded Puig, ooh, that's, uh, no, I guess that's not. When we traded Puig, we lost a good bat. And, I mean, a good arm, a really good arm. And I swear this kid almost looks like a reincarnation, sort of. He's he's played in 12 games. Well, I don't know what he's done tonight. Up to la up through last night, he had played in 12 games. 11 of them in this call-up, one last year. And he hit, has hit eight home runs in his first 12 games, which is he's the only player in all of Major League Baseball history to have hit eight home runs in his first 12 games. So how's that for something, right? I kind of am digging that. And he hit three of them in one game, no less. But, so I at least have some bright spot there for my Reds. So this is a pretty good little half of the case. We have got a Seattle Mariners D. Gordon one-of-one one printing plate for a mini. So we're kind of cruising along in this half. The printing plate's very hard to hit. Of course, the metal mini, very hard to hit. We got our hot box. I mean, as a whole, uh, I think it's a pretty good little half. Jail, and it, people have too much time when an egg becomes famous. Well, you're not wrong, but do you remember when that happened? I mean, somebody just put up the picture of the egg and they said, I don't recall what the wording was specifically, but something to the effect of they wanted to see if they could make the egg go viral by, you know, clicking it, you know, putting likes on it. And wouldn't you know, that is just exactly what they did. So... Not just the person who put it up had free time. All the people who shared it and clicked like and et cetera, et cetera, that propelled it to internet stardom. <laughs> it's still funny to think about to me. All right, we're at our halfway point. We've opened three. We have three remaining. <laughs> I do not think, as you say, that he is, quote, unquote, as crazy as Puig. No, he seems to be, uh, he's from the Dominican Republic. I forget what age he is. He's, you know, not super young. He's not like 18, 19 young, but he's relatively young and really has been playing incredibly well. He's an outfielder as well. And I guess, of course, part of the reason, obviously, that we would have traded Puig is because we just had him as a rental anyway. He's going to be a free agent after this year. And so I guess that's, they had been watching him, I'm sure, obviously, in AAA and decided he was ready to take over that spot. And I guess that's why they felt comfortable moving Puig midseason instead of waiting. Well, plus you get a return for him that way. So Rizzo and the Cubbies, this is the second type of box loader that we can get. The uh, N43s, those don't come out as frequently as the full-size box loaders, but usually we find a handful of them in every case. You said you didn't know about the egg until you saw it in here. <laughs> Yeah, I don't even know how I know about it. I did know about it, but I don't know how I knew about it. I probably at some point, you know, read it or somebody told me about it. Who knows? I did not, however, click on it or share it. So I can tell you that much. So tomorrow, of course, we're getting Bowman Sterling baseball. And man, oh man, is that a hot mess. I got less of that than anything I have gotten in, what, the last four years, five years? I mean, it's a new product for hobby. It had 
not been previously, well, recently, uh, a hobby release. It had been a retail release. And now it's come to hobby. And they only gave me a case and a half of Bowman Sterling. Can you believe that? Like, I don't think there's been anything that I've only had a case and a half of, except maybe, well, yeah, that is true. Some of the really high-end top stuff I have trouble getting a lot of. They won't give me much of some of that. But outside of that, I can't think of another product where I have gotten such a small, small amount. So I'm going to have to probably try to round up some more of that, provided that it's good, and I presume that it will be. You know I love my Bowman. I was so upset when that's all they gave me. Like, so bummed. The Phillies and Herrera. I can't even imagine how I only got that amount. Considering what I spend with those guys. That's crazy. And Siri thought I was talking to her. I said considering and somehow she heard, yeah, her name. But then when I just said her name just now, yeah, she didn't pick up on that. <laughs> Good old iPad. All right, the Texas Rangers have an autograph, and it is Isaiah Kiner Falafa Falifa something that I'm horribly mispronouncing, but it is the Texas Rangers with a little autograph headed your way. Jay Allen says that's his second relic, and yeah, he don't want any more relics. He only wants ink. I will do my best, my friend. I will do my best. Hey, does anybody know how Grinky, how his start went today for the Astros? I know it was supposed to have been last, last night, got rained out, and I think they were just going to play a doubleheader today, so I would assume he would have been an early game today. The main game, of course, would have already been previously scheduled for tonight so did anybody happen to watch that game or hear anything about that game to know how it went how he looked the cardinals and miles michaelis of course you hit the nice metal mini of him earlier and now you have a little relic to go along with your metal mini. Tell you what, let's just look at these as we take them out. Maybe that's more efficient. Tony, he got the win, but he didn't look very sharp. Okay. I was curious about that because when he pitched his first game for the Astros, I kind of didn't think he looked totally like spectacular he didn't look bad of course I mean uh, listen a bad Granky is probably better than two-thirds of the pitchers out there on their best day let's be real but yeah I thought he was maybe not quite a hundred percent so sounds like maybe that's what happened today as well Ryan you concur so you guys both kind of had the same thought he's a little off only two earned runs, but he had to pitch around trouble. Okay, so he was, sounds like, uh, very hittable today as a whole. I like him, and I think he's going to be quite good for them, ultimately. And you know it seems like any time anyone goes to the Astros pitcher-wise, they always kind of change up their stuff a bit as in the Astros have the pitchers change up various aspects of their game and that's how they get these guys who have always been good and you suddenly they become an Astro and they're suddenly phenomenal you know <laughs> like Verlander right always really good as a Detroit Tiger no question but it seems like as he becomes an Astro he suddenly finds a whole new gear so I'm just curious as to when and where and how that's going to happen with Grinky. And in the meantime, if they're kind of dinking with his whatever they would be messing with, velocity or his mechanics or whatever, how much that's going to affect things. So 
but I've always liked Grinky. There's our first in bloom that we've seen tonight for that insert set. But that pitching rotation, oh, Verlander, Cole, and Grinky. Oh, <laughs> I mean, do you want to face that in the playoffs? I mean, no. No one wants to face that. And the interesting thing is with them, they, it just, doesn't it seem like they have unlimited talent in their farm system? Because they move out so many prospects that go on to play elsewhere and be really very, very good, yet they still have enough guys left to replenish themselves if they needed to, enough guys to trade and make a deal. I'm talking in the farm system. And not even have to touch their main contingent on the field. I mean, they are... They have a really well-crafted roster, top to bottom. Oh, Cole missed his start tonight. Oh, wonder why. I knew John Gray got scratched for the Rockies because he had a sore ankle or something to that effect. But I did not hear that Cole missed his start. I uh -huh, wonder what that was about. Because I hadn't heard anything about him having issues. I did hear, though, that uh, Max Scherzer, I guess, threw a simulated game from the mound today, and they're going to wait and see how he feels tomorrow before deciding if he's going to be put back in the rotation soon or not. He'd been throwing from the flat anyway. I think a couple of different times from the flat, but three from the mound today. So, see how that goes. He was scratched due to right hamstring discomfort while warming up. Huh. Uh-oh. Oh, that feels thick, guys. We might have a rip in there. <laughs> Oh, I hope we do. This has been such a good half case. I don't remember what came out of the first half. I hope it was good, too. But the back half has really been good, and that feels really thick, and I think it's going to be a rip. I think it is. I think it is. Because it feels like it should be. Oh. I almost sound like Woody Woodpecker there, didn't I? <laughs> Oh, 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 nice. And it's Acuna. It's an Acuna box loader rip numbered to 65. What are the odds on that? I know they're high. I know they're high. Atlanta Braves. Oh, man. So nice. Well, um. Oh, wait a minute. Is this a. No, there's three, there's three minis inside of it. So, okay. Dang, somebody called that earlier too, didn't they? Mm-hmm, somebody did. Somebody said, let's find one. Well, yeah, there it is. Atlanta Braves. I'm a little jealous of that. I'm not going to lie. I'm a bit jealous of that. <laughs> that is so sweet. Oh, Tony, you are not kidding. Jordan Alvarez has been so much fun to watch, hasn't he? Really incredible player. And didn't even come up early, you know. Came up kind of late in the grand scheme of things and has made a huge impact. I really do like that kid as well. I, I agree with you on that. So I think it's going to be an interesting uh, sort of situation, but I still think we're going to come down to the same teams that we've been seeing for the last few years. I think we're going to be, of course, we have the Red Sox in there. I'm not sure they're, how much they're going to factor in right now, but I think we're going to see the Dodgers uh, making a decent push and obviously, uh, obviously the Astros and 
probably the Yankees and the Indians uh, surprisingly looking pretty good. And the Twins, who I would say looked a little better back a month or two ago. I don't know. I don't know what's going to shake out with the Twins, but... This is Mr. Verlander. Speaking of the Houston Astros, you have a relic from Verlander to add to your haul. Although maybe the Astros haven't hit in here. I say add to your haul. That might be the first Astro. I can't recall now who else has come out for sure, but... Ah, see, Ryan says it is the second one. Okay, so I wasn't wrong. <laughs> right as I said, add to your haul, then I'm thinking, oh, man, I can't remember what the first one was. Maybe there wasn't one, and I'm just thinking there was, so you answered that for me. Thank you. Yes, the Altuve, that's it. Hi, Kevin, by the way. Kevin chimed in to help, uh, help refresh my memory, too. How you doing, Kevin? I'm still kind of gazing longingly over there at that Acuna box loader rip. I do like that. That one, though, somehow would be harder for me to rip. Like the little one, I would have no problem if it were mine. I would just be like, whoosh, you know, let's rip it. Let's see what's in there. But the big one, because it is so nice and so unique... I don't know if I would rip it or not, if it were mine. It has three minis in it, though, I think it said on the back. We'll look at it again when we recap, but I believe it said there are three inside there, which does up the temptation level a bit, doesn't it? But then I would be so bummed if I ripped it, because it's such a nice-looking card and so unique. If I ripped it and then I got somebody like dumb inside there <laughs> maybe dumb's not the right word but if I got some kind of player that wasn't a player that I loved or that wasn't a player that I could resell if I didn't love them then I would be super bummed that I had ripped it up so I would have a harder time tearing into that one I think Oh, Ke Kevin, yeah, was it you earlier that said to hit the triple rip? Yeah, and I'm like, that'd be nice, and then there it is. I'm pretty sure it says there are three in there. We'll look at it again when we recap, but I think that's what it said. But that's the first box loader rip card that I have pulled myself. I mean, they're new this year, obviously, and we haven't done a lot of breaks of this yet. Even though it's been out for a while, so too has been everything else and its brother come out. And I don't know, somehow I got some of this shuffled back a little bit, so it hasn't opened as much of it as we would have normally. But still, I mean, to only be on our second case and have already found the booklet, the rip box loader, the metal mini, uh, I don't even remember what else we've had. We've had really good luck with Genter this year thus far. Franco, Phillies, Relic. Did somebody tell me, I think somebody told me, that Franco got sent back down to the minors? Is that right? I actually thought he was playing reasonably well this year. I guess not. Um... You said, check out the guy who looked inside his triple rip and saw them all. He used his iPhone flashlight. Well, you know, in the regular rip cards, you for sure used to be able to do that. And we talked about that uh, on some of the earlier regular rip cards. But they changed it up this year and they added like another, oh, mosquito, get off me. Hang on a second. They added another, oh, I'm going to try to smash him depending on where he lands. Hang on. Oh, where'd you go, you stupid mosquito? Oh, now he's gone. Oh, there he is. There he is. Don't land on the card, man. I can't smash you on the card. Land on the table. Ah, 
All right, well, we're just going to have to let them sting me or bite me or whatever they do to you. But anyway, they've added something new inside the rip cards, and you can't really see inside the regular ones anymore. Added, made it thicker, added an extra piece of paper or something. So the Angels to 75 with the Otani rip. And whatever it is that they did to the regular ones, they must not have done to the big ones if the guy could see through it with his flashlight. But good to know. So whoever is getting that, then you can check it out and then decide if, in fact, it's worth ripping into, I guess. Your Jose Altuve triple rip had the the Yastrzemski stained glass, a Trout SSP, and a Cabrera SSP. That's not too shabby, man. A stained glass and two super short prints. Yeah, that's worth ripping into, I guess. And I probably would have an easier time ripping into an Altuve than an Acuna. Just because I like Acuna. Not that I don't like Altuve, I do, but... I would have a harder time, again, destroying the, probably the Altuve card than I would maybe some others. So, Blue Ribbons, that, is that the first one of those we've seen tonight? That is another one that has a separate bidding category, of course. I don't know if we've seen another one of those tonight or not, but if we haven't, uh, there is one. I would like the stained glass one, though. It would have definitely been worth it to rip it to get the stained glass. And so, Ryan, did you look at it? Did you, like, use a flashlight and look at yours first to decide if you wanted to rip it? Or did you just know right away you were going to tear into it no matter what? I'm always interested in people's thought processes about how they decide to rip or not to rip. For me, it's just usually I can't stand it. I just have to, I just want to know what's in there. <laughs> you know, I just, you know, just got to know. Can't just have it hanging around there forever and not know what's inside of it. But I think there are a lot of people who don't rip them. In fact, I think there's a ton of people who don't ever rip them. Which, in theory, would make whatever was inside that much more valuable. Because there's not a lot of it to begin with. And then if a lot of them don't get opened, so whatever's inside never makes it to the open market. If you were a person who resold, for instance, instead of adding to your personal collection, you'd think that would help the value of those. Oh, you, try, you tried to see yours and you couldn't really tell. But you knew it would always bother you if you didn't rip it. <laughs> exactly. So you're like me, man. It's like, no, I have to know what's in there. Can't just let that sit. It does still look nice, even ripped. Well, that's good. I, You know, I didn't know on those box loaders how well those would kind of go, not really back together, but you know what I mean. How well they would display after they had been ripped. An Acuna box loader, Atlanta Braves. We are, of course, last box mojo time. And we've already found some really nice stuff tonight. But we're going to still try to conjure up uh, something else. Let's try to conjure up even more magic here out of the last box tonight. To see what we can accomplish. Of course, tomorrow night, I'm looking so forward to getting into that Bowman Sterling. I'm really excited about that. I love my Bowman so much. And, of course, any new Bowman product makes me happy. Oh, my goodness, kids. I think we're going to have a booklet in this half, too. Holy mackerel. 
If that is a booklet, and I believe that it is, think about the half case that we've just had. Metal Mini, one in ten cases roughly. Booklet, one in ten cases roughly. And then the box loader rip card. I don't even know what the odds are on that, but I'm pretty sure that's a booklet. It feels like a booklet. If I got your hopes up and it's not, you'll be like mad at me, but <laughs> it feels like a booklet to me. So I'm thinking that it is. Jantlin says, I called the booklet, but that would be crazy if we hit a booklet out of both cases. I mean, this is only the second case that we've finished. And if we end up hitting a booklet out of each of the two cases that I've gotten so far, that's going to be pretty crazy. Crazy in a good way. And there's a little Mike Piazza relic for the Dodgers. So yeah, I hope Bowman Sterling is really good tomorrow too. It took the place of, um, or I think it did. Oh, why can't I think of the name of it? There's a Bowman version. There's a Topps version. High tech. I think that Bowman Sterling may have knocked Bowman High Tech off the calendar this year. Of course, we only had High Tech for a couple years anyway. And I believe that we will not have it this year. We are having Tops High Tech still, but I think we're not going to have Bowman High Tech. And instead, we've got this other Bowman Chrome. Tim, any Twins or Pirates hits? I do not think so that I remember. But we are going to be recapping um, pretty soon, Tim. We're on the last box. And we'll, of course, recap the autographs, the relics, uh, the box loaders, and that sort of thing here shortly when we get the last of this looked through. So from that perspective, your timing is right on, right spot on, man. And Jay Allen, thank you, as always, for jumping in to help out and answer that question. You guys often see those things pop up before I do, so always appreciate your willingness to jump in there and, and help out your fellow breakers or breakees. Would you be breakees, so, I guess, maybe? I don't know what the term would be for that. Tim, you think high tech is ugly? Um... I don't really think it's ugly. It's I, I always have a difficult time remembering all the pattern names, as in I can never, ever remember all the pattern names. I don't really think it's ugly, per se. I like the fact that it's the acetate kind of cards, so I will miss that, because I like something a little unique, not always just cardboard. So that part of it I will miss. And plus, I just don't ever like to see a Bowman product go off the calendar because I love Bowman. I love prospecting. Of course, if Sterling is as good as I think it's going to be, it's not going to matter. It's going to be awesome. But what I worry about is because they gave me such an incredibly, ridiculously, insultingly small allocation of it is that, you know, it's going to be really hard to get in future years, too. Because oftentimes with tops, once they lock you in with a number, that's just like the number you have forevermore. It is extremely difficult to get your numbers bumped up with top stuff. <laughs> Jay Allen said it would be called breakies. <laughs> I wasn't sure about that. <laughs> Well, yeah, I guess that's a good point, Tim. The colors are, some of the color schemes are a little, as you say, odd. A little, maybe not totally, entirely pleasing color combinations every time. But um, I I'll still will kind of miss it. There's definitely aspects of it I like, including, as I said, the, the acetate cards are nice. 
There's some more little canines. Another in bloom. Some of those in blooms we've seen, you can actually they have seeds in them. You can plant them in the ground and grow whatever plant is featured on it. And we haven't seen one of those tonight specifically that you could put in the ground and grow. But in the past, we have absolutely pulled those a couple different times, as a matter of fact. Which I thought was kind of a cool little touch, you know. If you so chose to not keep it and just drop it in the ground and grow some, grow some flowers. <laughs> in fact, I think I have one or two of those around here somewhere. I should plant them. Although I don't know this, maybe not the right time of year to plant them. I don't know. I'll have to look it up. So this is a sports author, sports agent author. And that goes, of course, to non-baseball celebrity. Celebrity being used very loosely in the term of that guy, but nonetheless, you know what I mean. All right, we are approaching the end here. We're about to get to what I believe is our booklet. I'm pretty sure it's a booklet. I think it's a booklet. You're going to be hating me if it's not, but it really feels like one. <laughs> oh, yes, baby. It's a booklet, babies. All right, there's that. And here's the mini. And here is the booklet. Oh, Raphael Devers and the Red Sox. And you will notice that it is a sticker autograph in there, as they often are when paired with relics in the Tops world. And by the by, it's numbered 210. Mm -hmm. So Red Sox with a nice little Raphael Devers booklet. Sweet, kids. It does have a little, can you see that? It's got one corner up there that's got a little jammed up on it. Um, on the back... Actually, that whole, yeah, that right in that upper left, and maybe even a little bit on the inside corner as well, slightly jammed up on it, not massively so, but a little bit. And then you've got something right here on the edge, too. Looks like a little piece of the, it's like a coating that's on there, and it looks like maybe it's gotten slightly peeled back right there. So I see two little kind of minor imperfections on it. They're not major, but you know if I see them, I will call them. I don't always catch them, but when I do, I'm going to share them with you. So, Tim said, you have seen a lot of the booklets dinged. You pulled a Bryant the other day that was dinged up as well. Yeah, I mean, again, you guys know how it works. It's the curse of the thick cards. I mean, it just seems to happen no matter what product, no matter the manufacturer, whenever we get into these thicker cards, we seem to have a lot of issues with things like that, just being little dents and dings and imperfections. It's just a part of the deal, I guess. We have to learn to learn to accept it if we want cool, thick cards, I suppose. Speaking of cool, thick cards, this uh, is our recap starting and our box loader that is a rip card. It is numbered to 65 for the Braves with Acuna Jr. And three of something is in there for whoever gets this. If they, you know, feel so inclined to rip it, you got three little mini somethings in there. Then we have a one of the N43 smaller box loaders in this half, and that was Rizzo and the Cubbies. And then you have a regular Acuna Jr. box loader. And you have a little Torres box loader for the Yankees. He's been playing quite well in the last couple days, particularly. A DeGrom for the Mets. And the Indians with Francisco Lindor. All right, now, here's our booklet again. 
as a recap, if you want to know more about this, we called out uh, most of the little imperfections a minute ago. We won't go through that again, but it is numbered to 10. It is Devers for the Red Sox, and that only comes out about one in every 10 cases. I am amazed that we have found one in each of the two cases that we have opened so far. The odds of that were definitely against us, but we really did quite well, so I'm pleased. Then we found this little fellow. Mm -hmm. He's about one in every 10 cases as well. That is a metal mini, and it is Miles Michaelis for the Cardinals. Non-baseball celebrity relic. And there you have Piazza as a Dodger. A rip card for Mr. Shohei Otani and the Angels. It is numbered to 75. Franco for the Phillies. Verlander and the Astros, the Cardinals, and Michaelis again. An autograph for the Rangers with Isaiah, whose last name I butcher every time I say it. There's the Phillies and Herrera. Oh, see, I forgot we had this too. We've got a one of one printing plate in here too. Crazy. And it is D. Gordon and the Mariners. Non baseball celebrity poker player guy, Andre Dawson and the Cubbies. The Nats and Trey Turner. Cal Ripken Jr. for the Baltimore Orioles. Another poker player guy. An autograph for the Padres with Framil Reyes. A relic for the Braves with Sean Newcomb. This chick, who is um, a minor league baseball general manager that you all were kind enough to look up and find out. I think you said she was the Reno Aces, which is an affiliate of the Arizona Diamondbacks. So that will go to the D-backs, since that's who the, the, the major league club affiliate is of her minor league team that she manages. And then a Jose Altuve for the Astros with a framed relic. And we got it started tonight with Salvador Perez and the Kansas City Royals. All right, so that is the break and the recap, but you know what we're going to do. We're going to put up the spreadsheet information one more time for those of you who jumped in after the fact and maybe you missed it. Here's what you need to know. Expecting this to be out the door and on the way to you Friday. If I can possibly get it sent out to you sooner than Friday, I will happily get that done for you. And, of course, uh, everybody's going to get a package. If you had one of the teams, you definitely pulled stuff. If you had one of the extra bidding spots, you most likely pulled stuff. Unless it was one of the ones that's really hard to hit. Like the DNA relics or the presidential pieces or something like that. If you got skunked in that, which we know you did, um, you are still going to get consolation cards in the mail, okay? So you will get something no matter what whenever you pay shipping. So tomorrow night, remember we're starting a little early, 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific. We've got three new releases. We're going to bust into all of them in slightly lower quantities because there is so much of it. So we'll do a half case of Bowman Sterling. We'll do an eight box enter of Unparalleled Football and a half case of Heritage High Number Baseball. On Thursday, we're going to do a five box case of TriStar Autograph Football jerseys, another eight box enter of Unparalleled Football. On Friday, we're going to do a nine box half case of Don Russ Football. Saturday and Sunday, both will be off nights because that's a lot of base cards and all that stuff that I just read off. And if I don't take off a couple of days to sort them, we'll end up way behind again with shipping. So, yeah, that's how it's going to have to roll here for a little while till we can get out of some of this base card heavy stuff, I guess. So, anyway, that has got us covered for tonight. So, as always, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you spending part of your Tuesday night with me. If I don't see you again tomorrow night, I hope I will see you again soon. And uh, until then, I guess I am out of here. We'll see you at the next time. Bye now.